How's it going, Dave from Comic Book Investments? So, I got a ton of stuff here I want to go through. Some pretty interesting stuff. Some pretty big, 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 big books. But as you guys know, if you want to win this book, all you have to do is head over to collectorscomics.com to win this book. Enter in the giveaway. Just make sure to subscribe to this channel and also to our Instagram. So, that's that. But as you know, as you know, I have... An auction going on. Uh, I think this is our 12th featured auction. We have weekly auctions where we do every weekend, but this is our feature auction. It literally ends this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, the premiere day, which is like probably the more expensive, more unique books, um, those end on Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday is everything else A through Z. So I am going to showcase some of this stuff, tons and tons of stuff. Probably have like, I don't know. Probably like $200,000 just right here. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. This one, I always love interesting things. Now, as a Turtles fan, I knew about this. But this is very nice in super high grade. Yes, very high grade. This is like a complete... It was like a trade paperback way back in 19, I think, 88. I believe, yeah, 1988. Uh, Bur Mirage sent this out. And it comes signed by Peter Laird and Eastman with a little Turtles drawing in there. And uh, it's numbered out of a 1,000. And this one also came with a letter from Mirage uh, stating, basically, I'm sorry that we're late and uh, we try to get to you as fast as possible. So a personalized letter of this book, trade paperback, pretty cool. I'm always up for new and unique things. So it's pretty expensive, actually, this thing. Uh, like, there's no, like, CGC for books. But being in high grade, this is probably anywhere, can fetch anywhere from, I've seen them go as low as, like, 650 up to almost $1,000. All right, next is we got, this is in no particular order, other than the fact that, there we go. Um... This is a Frank Frazetta, Famous Funnies, 211 in a 9-0. In a 9-0. If you like golden names, there you go. You got this one. Then we have a Spider-Man, number one. This is a low grade in a 1-0. This is a CBCS, but it is complete. And it just has kind of tape all over the cover. Another Golden Age book. Oh, a lot of Golden Age here. Uh... Captain America 32. Also, I am angry. I spent a lot of time and a lot of money to upgrade my equipment and no one noticed. Not a single soul. Not a soul. Not a soul. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Maybe I'm doing trauma. Yeah, but I, I, I got um, a bunch of new recording equipment. Not for uh, voice, but that's next. I mean, I already got this mic. It's pretty expensive and nice anyways. And I, I just want to upgrade my board, um, my soundboard. But, yeah, no one noticed. I got a new camera. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, for noticing. Spent a bunch of money. Spent like $1,000. And no one noticed. <laughs> I should have just kept my, like, $150 one I was using. Um, yeah. I compared them side by side. Um, and I was just always so washed out. You know, I, I still probably have to play around with some settings. And I'd always try to, like, put some filter on or something, like, try to make it a little better. And it's never really looked, worked that great. So I was like, okay, I'm going to get a new camera. I get a new camera and no one notices. So, I don't know. Punch Comics. This is a cool cover. has, like, blood coming off some claws. Great cover. Classic cover. I'm not sure what constitutes a classic cover. I think there's just some cabal of people that just go, classic cover, classic cover, classic cover. And they just deem it like that. This means that people like the cover. They buy the book because the cover. I mean, that's a lot of comics in, in general, but it's pretty much like a lot of people are like, ooh, I like that cover. And then someone has their finger to the wind and goes like, oh, there's a lot of people that say they like this cover. And so if it's a golden age, classic cover. Fantasy Four number one. And a point five. It's missing the centerfold. Other than that, not terrible. Got a bunch of giant size X-Men number ones. This one's a 9 -0. I think we have like 6-5 and a 4-0 and maybe a 1-0 or something. Got a bunch of different ones. Here we go. 
first and only Golden Age uh, Scarecrow cover. This is in a 2.5 Detective Comics 73. Pretty rare. Then we got Daredevil with that new TV show coming out that they like shot the whole thing. They didn't like it, so they went back and reshot a bunch. Hopefully it's good. Um, I mean, I liked the Netflix Daredevil one. I ended up not see. I ended up turning it off after season two, but um, I don't know. I'll check it out. I mean, Disney Plus hasn't really been. The only thing I liked so far off of Disney Plus were I, I liked Mandalorian season one. And season two is pretty good. Season three, not so good. I would say, but that was a long, long time ago. Recently, X Men, the animated, what is it called? X Men 97 or continued or whatever it was. Great. That show was fantastic. First appearance of Brainiac, Action 242. Spider Man 129, first Punisher. I was just talking about the Punisher. And he's going to be in the new Daredevil uh, TV show. Born Again, is it called? Born to be Wild? I don't know. First Punisher. And a 9 6. And here we go. This is our biggest book of the auction. Are you guys ready for it? We got. First appearance of Iron Man in a 7.5. Tales of Suspense, 39, 7.5. Very, very nice. Very, very nice. And has white pages, too. White pages. And then we got another big book here. X-Men number one in a 6.5. Very cool. Then this one. Now, not a big book per se, but in a big grade. This is a Daredevil 186. I think there's a Frank Miller run still going on, yeah? In a 9.9. That's right, 9.9. Then we got Earth's Mightiest Superheroes. Avengers number one in a 3.0. Anyway, here we go. We got a uh, variant cover of House of Slaughter number one. This is a Del Otto variant cover, and it's signed, too. It's signed by Del Otto and mm, James mm, Tinian the fourth, and Weather Del Adero. Adera. I am terrible with names, but there you go in a 9-8. In a this one I can pronounce. I can pronounce this name just fine. This is Mr. Stan Lee's signature on a Spider-Man number 20, first Scorpion. Swamp Thing, one of my favorite covers of all time. Not sure why I like it, I just do. This is how it works. You don't know why things are the way they are, but I just do. I think it's a great cover. There's also, I think it's number nine where he's coming out. So something about like coming out of like the water and Bernie Wright's in the way he draws. I really love it. In a 9.8. 9 I'd love to have that original cover. Here we go. Here is a Batman 232. Signed and sketched by. This is a, this is a great one. This is, this is a very unique piece. I'm going to tell you right here. This is a one of a kind, right? I mean, most everything here is not one of ones. There's either higher grades or in, in this case, you know, there's multiple in this guy. This is a true one of one. This is a Batman 232 signed by Neil Adams. Okay. We've seen signed Neil Adams one before. Then it has a sketch by Neil Adams of Batman's face. Okay. 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 We've kind of seen that before, but, but it also has Adam West and Burt Ward. That's right. Adam West and Burt Ward, who played Batman and in, in Robin in the 60s. I don't think, number one, you'll never see something like this again. I haven't. And to get all this in, in on one, mm -mm, never will happen. Like, there might be, might be another Batman comic. And this is a 9 note. That's a really good grade for this. There might be another, I don't even know if there would be another Batman comic book who neil adams did so there's only x amount like i don't know how many there is maybe 30 that he's did between batman and detective 40 50 covers uh, of neil adams from the 60s where you also have him signed it drew a batman 
and Burt Ward and Adam West have signed it themselves. I don't think you'll ever come across anything with those key markings on it ever again. I think this is the only one. I think this is a true one of one, not just the comic book itself, but what it has going on for it. And you know me, I love one of ones. One of ones are special. Why? Because they're the only one. A true one of one. I, I'm pretty confident. I'm. Yeah, it's. I'm just trying to think like the logistics. Okay, you'd have to get Neil Adams on it. Adam West is dead. Neil Adams is dead. So it'd have to have been a while ago. I've seen a lot of Neil Adams sign stuff. It's not often. I'm not saying it's like, oh, they're all over the place. But they, they do exist. But I don't think it's pretty rare to see where he signed and drew a sketch on it. That is pretty rare. Then you add in the fact of Burt Ward and Adam West, which I rarely come across those to begin with. So, yeah. I think it's a true one of one. All right. Here we got first Doctor Doom, played by uh, Robert Downey Jr. Right here. And this is Pedro Pascal right there. Um, this is Eddie from uh, Stranger Things. I don't know, Jessica Alva, the other one, <laughs> and then uh, whoever Ben Grimm is. I don't, I don't know those actors. Um, I recognize them, but I couldn't tell you the name, their names off the top of my head. Uh, oh, we got another Spider-Man, number one, but this was in a 4 and this one is CGC. And then we got the first appearance of Robbie Reyes, but Roberto Robbie Reyes. Uh, this is the Smith variant. Cool cover. And a 9-8. Ooh, then we got this meaningless book. Has no significant value whatsoever. Just kind of... I don't know. I think I should probably throw it out. I'll, I'll, I'll probably... Yeah, we won't put this in the auction. I'm joking, of course. This is Amazing Fantasy 15. First appearance of Peter Parker who is also Spider-Man. Later becomes Spider-Man because first he's born as Peter Parker and then when he's a teenager, I don't even know how old he is, 16, 17, when he becomes Spider-Man? I think it's like 16, which is just weird to think of because he's in high school. Have you seen the high school kids these days? They're teeny tiny. Something in the water. They're not growing right. 16-year-old. Um, I could not imagine a 16-year-old. Also, let me preface this. This is not a 16-year-old that grew up doing sports his whole life. Uh, like my friend, like my best friend, he did sports his entire life. He ended up getting a full ride scholarship for football. So at 16, he was like Duncan. He was like, I was like six three and probably like 200 pounds, pretty muscular, all that kind of stuff. So they do exist out there. Just that wasn't Peter Parker though. He was a nerd. He was a nerd. So he's probably like, I don't know, five four and. 80 pounds soaking wet. So, but when you look at Spider-Man here, because he's 16, right? He's 16 here. That looks like a man. So, I mean, Jack Kirby drew the cover, I believe. Yeah, Jack Kirby drew the cover. Um, Spider-Man. But if you compare it to this Spider-Man, even this Spider-Man, that's a 16-year-old kid? Don't think so. Don't think so. Don't think so. All right, then we got the first appearance of Justice League. Fun fact, fun fact. The reason why we have the Fantastic Four is because DC came out with, um, and Marvel in general, is DC came out with uh, Brave and the Bold 28, and they redid um, kind of the rebirth of DC superheroes. And then they started doing Justice League. Well, over at Marvel, Martin Goodman, who owned Marvel Comics, was like, Stan Lee, we need a superhero team of our own. DC's Justice League is killing it. You come up with your own superhero. And Stan Lee is like, ugh. I was going to quit. And he's like, well, before you quit, go talk to your wife. And he went and talked to his wife and he said, I forget her name, June, I think. I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, dear wife, Mrs. Lee, I plan on quitting comic books. I'm over it. It's not getting me anywhere. I want to be a great writer. And then she goes, well, Stan, Maybe, before you quit, write the comic book that you've always wanted to write. And he goes, I will. I will do that. I will go to Martin Goodman and say, yes, I will accept your offer of creating a new superhero team, but I'm going to write it the way I want to write. Martin Goodman says, I don't care. As long as it sells, it makes money, I could care less what you do. 
And so he wrote Fantastic Four number one. And then I believe it was drawn by Jack Kirby. And uh, the rest is history. And then Marvel had a huge boom. And then later, wherever it went, this book came out a little bit later. And this was a failed magazine. They tried many times to get amazing fantasy off the ground. They changed it to amazing adult fantasy for a bit to try and maybe that would bring in readers. But no. So issue 15, they're like, Dear Mr. Goodman, I have this idea for uh, this character. His name is the Spider, and he's a man. And Martin Goodman says, that's a terrible idea. It's awful. How dare you? You're fired. He's like, no, 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 no. I'll put it in a magazine. We're canceling it anyways. Fine. I don't care. Who cares? We're canceling Amazing Fantasy? Sure. Throw it in. Throw that garbage. Throw that garbage character in that garbage heap of Amazing Fantasy, and I'll never have to see or look at another Spider-Man again. And that is, word for word, exactly how the story went. Exactly. A hundred percent. I do not lie here on the comic book investment channel. It is exactly word for word. I was there. I know. I was a fly on the wall. And then we have one of my all-time favorite covers of all time. Did I say, mention this is my all-time, of all-time favorite covers? One of them. Uh, Crime Spence Stories, number 22. Great cover. Chopping off the head. What more could you want in a cover? And then last but not least, we have Flash 105. Now, a lot of people might be wondering, Flash 105, why is it 105? What happened to 104? What happened to 103? What happened to number one? Well, what happened was, they came out with Flash comics way back in the day. And then it went all the way, in the Golden Age, went all the way up to 104. And then that's when DC was like, you know, this Flash character, he sucks. And no one's buying his magazines. Get rid of him. And they canceled it at 104. Then about a decade or so later, uh, they rebirthed the Flash. They got rid of uh, Jay Garrett, and they put in Barry Allen. And that showed up at showcase number four. And then people were like, oh, it's the superhero again. I kind of like superheroes. Superheroes are popular because they were not always popular. Superheroes actually, after World War II ended, they kind of, no one really wanted superheroes anymore. Most of them all disappeared. Even the most biggest superhero of all time, the Green Llama, he disappeared. And then DC brought him back in the Silver Age. And started with showcase number four. Proved pretty popular. So they, The Flash did a few more issues down the line. And like number eight. and Was it 13 and 14? And then they're like, let's get him back in his own magazine. Okay, we'll start with Flash number one. No, 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 no. We don't. See, back in the old days, they did not like starting over with number one. Like they do today. Everything. It's like they make one issue. Oh, it's a huge hit. Let's make a second issue. Uh, it kind of went down in sales. All right, let's just rebrand it. It's the third issue is number one again. That's what they do today. Everything's just a number one, number one, number one, number one. They'll do a run, and it'll be like three issues long, and then they'll start all over again with number one. It's dumb. It's stupid. Can't stand it. So, But back then, they were a little smarter, and they're like, no, 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 no. We're going to start up at 105 because we'll continue from 104, and it's been like a decade. Who cares? That is it. Go over to CollectorsComics.com. If you see anything, even if you have zero intention of ever buying anything at all, at least go look and then come back to the comments and say, hey, David, you know what I saw in there? I saw this book that I liked. And it was, type it in, name, issue. And it's like, one day I would like to own that. Or I have zero desire to ever own any at all. If someone gave me a copy, I would throw it away. But just put a comment in the comments down below of some things that you're interested in. I hope I could have told you some pretty cool stories off the top of my head, totally unplanned. And I kind of liked it um, because I feel like a lot of people don't know all this information and I have it stored up in my head and I need to do something with it. It's kind of useless. It doesn't do much of anything. <laughs> so now you can have my useless knowledge passed down and then you can tell your children's children, children, children. And um, yeah. CollectorsComics.com auction is ending this weekend. Have a great day.